This video covers volumetric analysis. By the end of this video, you should understand the concept of volumetric analysis, be able to use titration vocabulary correctly, and be able to perform titration calculations. Volumetric analysis is a method where we use a titration to determine the amount of a given substance present in an unknown solution. It's based on volume and concentration, hence the term volumetric analysis. A titration is a method by which we deliver a solution of known concentration into a solution of unknown concentration and use that to de determine the unknown concentration. This is commonly used for acids and bases, but that's not the only application of a titration. Let's start with some lingo for titrations. First, there's the titrant. That's the solution of known concentration. That's the thing we know the concentration of. Sometimes this is also called the standard. Then there's the analyte. This is the solution of unknown concentration. This is the thing we're trying to determine the concentration of. And finally, there's the equivalence point. The equivalence point is the point where the amount of titrant added completely and exactly neutralizes the amount of analyte. At this point, the moles of H plus ions will be equal to the moles of OH minus ions. Those H plus and OH minus ions will have combined to form water. It's also true at this point that the moles of acid and base are stoichiometrically equal. That means that they're equal dependent on the mole ratio in the equation. If it's a one-to-one -one ratio, then the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base. It's a, if it's a one-to-two ratio, then the moles of acid are in a one-to-two ratio to the moles of base, whatever that mole ratio is from your balanced equation. So let's talk about how a titration works. The goal of a titration is to determine how many moles of acid or base are in the unknown solution. So the scenario here is you would be given a solution of, say, HCl, but you wouldn't know the concentration of that solution, the molarity of that solution. So a titration would be used to figure out the concentration. Again, we use volumes to convert between moles and concentration. Since we'll know the molarity and the volume of our titrant, we can figure out the molarity of our unknown. Here's a schematic for what a titration looks like. This tube here is called a burette. The solution of known concentration, or the titrant, goes into the burette. In this case, we're using one molar NaOH. This is a base. The solution of unknown concentration goes in a beaker or a flask below the burette. This is our solution of unknown concentration, in this case, HCl, an acid. The idea here is that we will add titrant until we've completely neutralized all of the analyte or the unknown solution. At that point, if we know how many moles of titrant we added, we'll know how many moles of unknown or analyte were there at the start. Let's look at this on a particle level. Here again, we have NaOH in our burette. So Na pluses and OH minuses. Remember, this is an aqueous solution, so those ions will have dissociated. Again, this is our base. In the beaker, we have unknown HCl. Now, of course, here you can see and count how many H pluses and Cl minuses there are. But in, in real life, we wouldn't actually be able to see these ions, so we wouldn't be able to simply count them. If we could, there'd be no need to do a titration at all. Looking at the balanced equation above, we see that when we combine NaOH with HCl, we get a salt, NaCl, and water. Recall this is the scheme for a neutralization reaction. That's what kind of reaction is going on here. So every time I add an OH- minus to the solution below, it will find an H plus to match up with and produce H2O liquid. This is the net ionic equation for our neutralization reaction. Each H plus will combine with an OH- minus to form water. I'll continue this process until all of my H pluses have combined with an OH minus to form H2O. Remember, we can't see these actual particles combining in real life, so on the macro level, we'd be using something to indicate when all of the H plus or OH minus had been used up from the unknown solution. Usually, we'll use either a pH meter or an indicator that changes color at the point where all of the unknown has reacted. 
at this point, we have exactly neutralized all of the unknown. We've exactly neutralized all of the HCl. This is our equivalence point. At this point, the moles of H plus will be equal to the moles of OH minus, and because there's a one-to-one -one ratio in my balanced equation, the moles of HCl will be equal to the moles of NaOH. Since we knew the molarity and the volume of NaOH required to neutralize all the HCl, we can calculate the number of moles of NaOH needed, and we know that at the equivalence point, that will be stoichiometrically equal to the number of moles of HCl that were present. So, here's a schematic for how titration calculations work. First, we take the volume of the standard solution or the titrant needed to reach the equivalence point, use the molarity of that standard solution or titrant to, to calculate the moles of the solute in that standard solution or titrant. In our previous example, that would be the moles of NaOH added. Then, using the coefficients from the balanced equation, we can determine how many moles of solute were in the unknown solution. In the previous example, that would be our HCl. And then, using the initial volume of that solution, we can calculate the molarity of that original unknown or analyte. Let's try some practice. Here's an example to consider. A 25 milliliter solution of unknown HCl is titrated using 0.75 molar NaOH. The endpoint occurs at 34.5 milliliters. Calculate the concentration of the unknown HCl. So first we need to write a balanced equation. These will always be neutralization reactions if we're dealing with an acid-base titration. So here's your neutralization reaction between HCl and NaOH. Then we determine the moles of titrant or NaOH used in this scenario. Using my molarity equation, I plug in the molarity of NaOH, 0.75, and the volume of NaOH, 0.035 liters, and I calculate that I added 0.026 moles of NaOH to reach the equivalence point, or to exactly neutralize all of the HCl. Using the mole ratio from the balanced equation, which we can see is 1 to 1, that means we had 0.026 moles of HCl in our initial analyte solution. Finally, we again use the molarity equation to calculate the molarity of the original unknown or analyte. The molarity is our x, we know the moles from the previous step, and we know the volume from the problem. It turns out that this solution was approximately 1.0 molar at the start. Here's a second example to try on your own. Go through the steps as in the previous problem, but be careful, this is not a one-to-one -one mole ratio between acid and base. Pause the video here and work through it. When you come back, I'll show you the answer. Welcome back. Here's our balanced equation. Again, note the two to one ratio between base and acid. First, we calculated the moles of titrant or NaOH added. Then we used our mole ratio of one to two to determine that we actually had half as much acid, ha half as many acid moles as we had base moles. And then we used the molarity equation again to calculate the molarity of our original analyte or unknown solution. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at the concept of volumetric analysis in general. Then we learned some titration vocabulary. And finally, we learned to perform titration calculations.